does dry fasting increase autophagy? Check out this video about dry fasting versus water fasting in increasing autophagy. So basically dry fasting is an advanced version of intermittent fasting where you're not consuming any calories but you're also avoiding liquids of all kinds and water. When you're dry fasting you're getting the same health benefits as with water fasting but there are reasons to believe that you may get some additional boost in autophagy. When you're dry fasting, the body begins to obtain its water from the cells. About 60% of your body is made of H2O molecules and it's the main component of muscle cells and organs. Beta oxidation, the process of burning fatty acids, creates metabolic water by releasing hydrogen atoms from glycerol. Glycerol is the backbone of triglycerides, which are fat energy molecules found in adipose tissue. Despite not drinking or eating anything, you'll still end up getting access to water through beta oxidation. That's how desert animals in nature like camels also survive. They're burning fat for fuel. Cell dehydration inhibits mTOR signaling and raises AMPK, which is the prerequisite for increasing autophagy. Therefore, dry fasting will activate autophagy because of the increased energy stress. A 5-day dry fast in 10 healthy subjects was found to be safe improve renal function, decrease body weight, and all circumferences. Short periods of dehydration and voluntary dry fasting will actually strengthen the body through hormesis and fat adaptation. During dry fasting, your cortisol and glucagon may be higher because the body is forced to break down more of its endogenous fuel sources. This is going to cause additional fat oxidation and potentially increased autophagy as well because you're recycling the cells through the process of cellular turnover. Water fasting has been shown to suppress carcinogenesis and fight tumors because of autophagy and starvation. Dry fasting also takes the water away from the cancerous cells which speeds up their demise. Another benefit of dry fasting is that it's going to protect against the potential detox symptoms you may get from water fasting. If you are fasting, then you will mobilize a lot of the toxins and pathogens that are held inside your adipose tissue and your body fat. During water fasting, you're going to release them into the bloodstream and you're going to excrete them through your urine, your sweat and other liquid excretions. During dry fasting, however, you're also going to burn through all of the energy inside a cell, including the toxins. And therefore, you're going to sidestep the potential detox symptoms. <laughs> Metabolic water you create during beta oxidation is also deuterium depleted which promotes mitochondrial functioning and health. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen that weighs twice as much thus it's called heavy water. Because of its heaviness deuterium doesn't pass through the ATP ACE as easily as regular hydrogen. This may clog the system and lower energy efficiency in the mitochondria. Water fasting with deuterium rich water is going to increase the deuterium content inside your body. Regular tap water, bottled water and lake or stream water is high in deuterium and if you want to start drinking it a lot then it's going to build up. Dry fasting on the other hand is going to deplete your body from deuterium because of beta oxidation and ketosis. Low Low carb high fat ketogenic diets are also deuterium depleting. When it comes to loose skin, then dry fasting can help to heal damaged and unhealthy skin more effectively than water fasting because you're gonna get more autophagy as well as oxidize more of the toxins that are stored underneath the skin. However, chronic dehydration can damage the skin and cause wrinkles. That's why you want to make sure you rehydrate yourself properly afterwards. It's said that dry fasting is three times more effective than regular water fasting and you're gonna go into autophagy faster as well. Based on my own understanding and experience, I would say that it's probably not three times effective, but at least it's going to be double the effectiveness. So, when on a regular water fast, you can expect to get into autophagy by day two of no calories, then with a dry fast, you will probably gain the same effects by 24 hours. Double whammy. Both of these methods are very useful and they can be used in different situations. You just have to know what are the benefits and what are the downsides. The benefits of dry fasting include more fat burning, more autophagy, you can get away with shorter fasts, you will burn off the toxins for fuel, and you will create deuterium depleted water which will reduce the amount of deuterium inside your body. The negatives of dry fast include more cortisol, more stress, it can cause dehydration, you're limited with your physical exercise, and you have to rehydrate yourself properly and more carefully afterwards. The benefits of water fasting include, you can fast for longer, you can exercise more during this time, you will stay hydrated, it's probably easier, and it's gonna keep the skin more elastic. Negatives of water fasting include, you can lose some electrolytes, you have to fast longer, you will urinate out the toxins, you may get detox symptoms, and you tend to pee more often as well.
pure water fasting with no added electrolytes or salts isn't that good idea because you may become deficient of certain minerals and electrolytes. So I always would recommend that you consume some electrolytes during the fast and not go on a pure water fast, if that makes sense. If your goal is to maximize autophagy, then a prolonged dry fast for a few days is probably gonna get the job done much faster and much more effectively. Possibly. However, it's not something that you have to do all the time and it may have its potential negative side effects and you have to be very careful to rehydrate yourself properly afterwards. Whatever the case may be, you still want to implement these different types of fasts, like regular water fasts, extended fasts, daily time-restricted dry fasts, and much more. If you want to master and optimize all of these types of fasting for performance and longevity, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. I also have the Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass video course. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. <laughs>